Hi, I'm Nikki Lechniak, and welcome to this episode of the 502 Report. Well, folks on both sides of the Ohio River have reached a compromise on the Ohio River Bridges Project, and now it's full steam ahead. After months of debate, the governments of Kentucky and Indiana are splitting the construction and cost of two new Ohio River bridges. Both states plan to use a combination of traditional transportation funds and tolls on the new and improved crossings to pay for construction and financing of the project. Kentucky will cover Spaghetti Junction, the downtown bridge, and bridge approaches on both sides of the river. Indiana will pay for the East End Bridge between Utica, Indiana and Prospect, and all of the roads and tunnel leading up to it. This way, each state will be able to find its own financing and contracting options for the $2.6 billion project. If there's more companies that are able to compete and bid on a $1.3 billion project than a very large $2.6 billion project, so we should have more people bidding on the project. Second, uh, we're this approach is going to ensure greater focus and speed. Construction is expected to start in 2013 and last about five years. And going back to college can be a good investment in the future, but if you need help paying for it now, here are a few options. If you're interested in going back to school, don't let the cost of tuition, books, and supplies deter you. Unemployed and underemployed workers can now apply for $800,000 in Kentuckiana Works training in six specific career areas like healthcare and transportation. For some people, they may need some help raising their skills before they can get the kind of job that they're going to want. And if, they're, if they turn out to be eligible, then we can use some of that federal money to give people a scholarship to go back to school to pursue one of those kinds of degrees. Visiting a Kentuckiana Works one-stop career center is the best way to learn if you qualify for the funding. The scholarships will provide up to $4,000 a year for two years per person. If you'd like more information about the Kentuckiana Works scholarships, go to KentuckianaWorks.org. If you're in college or looking to go back, there are hundreds of thousands of dollars to help you do it. And now is the time to file for the federal financial aid funding. How you can be excellent and build skill at finding out what those financial aid tools are is a critical part of going to college. The 55,000 Degrees program is hosting College Goals Sunday at three locations on January 29th to help interested students apply for that financial aid. There will also be a grab for cash giveaway similar to this one. Grab the cash. Grab the cash. How's he doing? Thanks to local sponsors. In today's knowledge economy, a college degree is your ticket to those better paying jobs and a larger life for you and your family. For more information on the event, go to 55,000degrees.com or if you're interested in learning more about the federal funding available, go to a Kentuckiana Works College Access Center or call 584-0475. Citing job creation and building a stronger regional economy among the successes of 2011, Mayor Greg Fisher's first report to the citizens is out and available on the city's website, louisvilleky.gov. While an apple a day may keep the doctor away, Residents of the Chickasaw and Portland neighborhoods now have a lot more options than just apples. Two stores in these neighborhoods are now part of the Healthy in a Hurry initiative through the Mayor's Healthy Hometown Movement. Through the program, the business owners received grant money for items like refrigeration and signage, which are helping them stock and sell fresh fruits and vegetables. So they can make shopping for healthier foods as easy as possible for their neighbors. The idea really is simple. A healthy community needs healthy foods. These neighborhoods with thousands of residents aren't served by a full-service supermarket, so until now, many residents didn't have access to fresh and healthy produce without having to drive. We got great chefs. We got two great culinary schools. We got a growing farm-to-table market with local farms as well, so it's only right that we can balance out the total offering of foods that we have here in the community through programs and partnerships like this with the Y. Now, items like these are conveniently located within reach, and there are several other markets like these throughout the community. An outpouring of community support will help feed 35,000 young JCPS students starting this year. The Blessings in a Backpack program sends students home with non-perishable foods to keep their bellies full over the weekend when the regular school lunch program isn't available. We're taking care of our kids. And there's not a person in this room that can't be responsible. There's not a person in this room that can't be proud of our community doing it. 
This year, all of the students who qualify from JCPS early childhood through fifth grade will take home backpacks thanks to generous sponsors. When America hears about this, the 28th largest school district in this country declaring war on their children and their educational difficulties and obstacles, by God, we're going to make it happen. It costs only $80 to feed one child on the weekends for an entire 38-week school year. If you'd like to support the effort, go to blessingsinabackpack.org to donate. If quitting smoking is one of your New Year's resolutions, you'll find plenty of help through public health and wellness free stop smoking classes. This 13-week program uses the Cooper Clayton method and includes weekly support group meetings. Participants will also receive nicotine replacement products such as patches and gum as well as free weekly refills on those products. Advanced registration for the program is required. If interested, please call 574-STOP or email stopsmoking at louisvilleky.gov. Just imagine trying to go back to school, support your family, and keep a job that pays for it all. That's where Family Scholar House comes in. Their downtown Scholar House campus on Breckenridge is now home to more than 50 families. They offer support, classes, child care, and homes to some. We have 598 families with 903 kids on the waiting list. Now, they receive services. They get services, but they don't have housing and child care. And without housing and child care, you know, James can tell you how important housing was for him and Julia. They really couldn't focus on everything that they need to focus on while they were staying with other people. The Family Scholar House has given James and his daughter not only a home, but a family, too. This place is a place of much of bunch of family together. And uh, you know, everybody loves one another around here. The staff is awesome. In turn, the junior finance major at UofL is able to take the time to model good habits for his child, sometimes studying late into the night. Hard work will pay off eventually. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you've been through and everything that's going on in your life. You put in the work, you know, you'll reap the benefits someday. And a new eco-friendly living facility is available for Spalding students in the same area. Spalding Suites, a 142-bed, three-story complex, features a variety of four- and eight-person suites, each with a shared, full-size kitchen, dining area, and living space. So it's more of an apartment than a dorm. We all know that when we want to both impart and enhance the dignity of a human person, one of the first two things we do is we reach out in helping with education and we give decent housing. Residents are encouraged to hang out, enjoy the space, and each other. Fifty new jobs and nearly a million dollars will be invested in Trilogy Health Services Louisville headquarters. The company, which provides senior living and long-term health care services, is expanding because it was outgrowing its prior location. We're now not only in beautiful offices, we're all together in the same area. We've got great training facilities, room for growth. We're really poised to kind of support our campuses as they move through the growth we're planning in the next couple years. Trilogy operates 65 health campuses throughout the Midwest. The company received tax incentives to encourage the company's further investment in its Kentucky location and workforce. Keep the culture going. Be addicted to lifelong learning. Be addicted to exceeding people's expectations. Some big changes are in store for the Metropolitan Sewer District. In response to the management issues in MSD, Mayor Fisher has appointed a new interim director, Greg Heitzman of the Water Company, and a task force is being formed to find cost reductions and help ensure a smooth transition within the agency. What we want to do is is to pursue programs and practices that are among the best in class in the United States. The task force will also look at the possibility of shared services between MSD, the Water Company, and Metro's Public Works Department. The members have a wide variety of expertise and will release a report of their findings to Mayor Fisher by the end of April. More than 77,000 households and small businesses in the Urban Services District, what was the old city limits? are going to have different garbage, recycling, and yard waste collection days. If you've received a mailer, you know your new collection day is beginning January 9th. The new routes will allow crews to do their jobs quickly and more efficiently. If you have any questions about changes to your collection days, call Metro Call 311. You'll soon be able to travel from the Ali Center to the Belvedere, thanks to a new pedestrian walkway across 6th Street. 
The 170-foot-long, 9-foot-wide walkway is expected to ease traffic and help make downtown more accessible for visitors. It has been so important to us and our neighbors, and we're excited that we will have a continuous flow um, that will connect us all the way to the Yum Center. It will enhance the community. The $835,000 project is a joint effort between Park and Louisville Metro government. Crews are expected to begin construction this spring, and the walkway should be finished by the end of the year. The experiment was a success. Now we've got to figure out ways to expand it. More frequent service is paying off for two of TARC's most popular routes. Service on those routes is up 20 percent, and the agency has been awarded another million dollars to continue that service every 15 minutes for another year on the number 23 Broadway Bardstown Road bus and the number 18 Dixie Preston Highway route. We've been able to reduce the uh, overcrowding on those routes, and we've been able to um, to provide folks with more transportation, particularly till 9 o'clock at night. We have redefined what rush hour is in this town. Those two routes make up almost a third of TARC's ridership with 15,500 passengers a day. For more information, go to ridetark.org. <laughs> Thanks to a half million dollars in corporate and community support, the Newburgh Boys and Girls Club is once again offering fun and safe after-school activities for local youth. This center, along with two other locations, was forced to close last fall due to lack of funding. Between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m. every day, that is the prime time for ju juvenile crime. So it's facilities like this that help our young people to come in and build positive relationships and positive values. To get involved or help support the Boys and Girls Club, go to BG cKYAna.org or call 690-3402. Louisville is now known for more than just its southern charm. Southern Living Magazine's Tasty Town Contest named Louisville one of the tastiest towns in the south, putting it on par with many cities possessing a rich history in the culinary field. Thanks to our high level of culinary talent, innovative use of local food, exciting places to eat, and variety of prices, Louisville now has the opportunity to become the tastiest. By casting your vote at southernliving.com slash tasty between now and the end of January, you can help put Louisville on the food map. The winner will be announced in the April 2012 edition. Thanks for joining me on this episode of the 502 Report. Until next time, take care. TV, a public service of Louisville Metro Government.